All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from just south of Nashville, Tennessee by Jason Yurishi. How are you doing, Jason? I'm doing great, John. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and Jason's a private fund manager of over $300 million in commercial real estate. And since 2017, his company, Yerushi Holdings, has amassed over 3,000 apartments and commercial real estate units. And you have built and exited multiple companies, construction, restaurants, a brewery, and multiple large apartment communities. And you're the host of Live 100 and the Multifamily Live podcast, runs seven-figure multifamily mastermind, and coaches clients on the Live 100 or the live 100 principles and what we're going to talk about today is this concept of using the 100 mile mindset so uh jason let's get straight into it just explain to me what the uh 100 mile mindset is and then we'll get into chatting about it yeah absolutely it's a way to think forward towards your goals of how you can go out there and reach your goals in a sustainable fashion many times we set our sights on goals and are so unrealistic to where we stand today right so think of you know new year's resolutions for an example 88 to 90 percent of new year's resolutions fail why mm -hmm. because december 31st we have this audacious goal and we've built no foundation so maybe we start out strong the first week the second week or third week of january but ultimately we trail off because we go back to our training right we go back to the foundation we've built the 100 mile mindset is something that came upon my path when i started running very long distance races i started running you know marathons back in uh, 2007 and about 2016 or 17 i came upon a term called ultra marathons it's basically mm -hmm. anything longer than a marathon 26.2 miles right and so this was my part of trying to run a 100 mile race however when i came upon a 100 mile run i just I didn't know how to do it, right? There's typically a training path for a, tw a marathon, maybe the six, right. 12 months be or 12 weeks before the race, you'll do a certain patterns of runs. With that, usually culminating in two or three 20 mile runs to get your mind ready, your body ready before the marathon. Well, for a 100 mile race, I was like, I can't imagine that I run a couple 80 mile races before the run. It just didn't make sense for me. Mm -hmm. And many times what we're doing is we're setting our sights so far off in a distance without actual steps to go out there and accomplish the goals that we get lost getting scared back from the cliff or scared back from the le ledge of what the goal is. So when I started to prepare for this uh, ultra marathon, I said, I can only prepare for what I know. So how can I condition myself to be ready for this race? And what I came upon is that if I got up and run six miles every single day for the course of 150, 200 days and do that, that's going to be the best training for myself and my mind. So no matter what, every single day, I, whether it was freezing out or 100 degrees out, you know, my, I had a sprained ankle, you know, a broken toenail. I was sick. You fill in the blanks. I got up every single morning. First thing I did, I get out the door and just start running that six miles. And when I got into the race, if I was to start that race and say today, I, you know, here I go, let's start. I only have mm -hmm. 99 miles to finish. I would put myself in a position where there would be a million reasons I could talk myself out of doing it. So I came into the race and said, okay, let's just run six miles to the first drink station and see where we get yeah. in there. Then to the next one. Okay, now I'm at the next one. I'm 12 miles in. Let me just run to the next six miles and see where that gets me. Mm -hmm. Let me just run to the next drink station. Okay, it's getting tough. My mind wants to say, let's just hold up. I don't, I don't know if we can do this. Well, let's just get to that next bridge and when i get there i can have a conversation with myself if it's still that time i'll push through and then we'll figure it out from there so i get to the bridge then i get to the tunnel and then i run another five miles and then it's now maybe getting tougher so i'm just saying let me just get another 200 feet or over the bridge or over the tunnel right and if it's tough i'll figure it out when i get to that next stop if i if i really want to stop right and lo and behold after a series of six mile runs five mile runs getting to the bridge getting to the tunnel I hit a hundred mile run based on a series of accomplishing uh, mm. tasks that I could be actionable and, and something I could uh, go and actually accomplish over the course of a hundred miles. Yeah. And if we think of us as our goals that we spend all of our time on the journey and not at the goal, we get back to the core function of going in there and being intentional with our actions, right? Because our mind leads to the actions, our actions lead to our outcome. And when we can put that together in one string, what happens? We start reaching our goals. Yeah. But so many times in life, we get stuck saying, that's my goal, but I don't take that first step. So there's no, there's no training, there's, there's no evolution. So mm -hmm. in my mind, in one second, I can stop. 
But if I just push forward that one second, usually I find myself on the other side of success just because in that one second, I didn't give up. And I yeah. had the journey along with the 100 mile mindset. And that yeah. speaks to every level of entrepreneurship. Yeah, and, and it's a great it's a great point because uh, in general, when we start out on things or when we set goals, generally things take longer than we would like. That's that's just a fact. And basically, there are also there are obstacles and things that come up that maybe we don't anticipate. And you're right. If we're so fixated on that top of the mountain, you know, when those obstacles, especially the unexpected ones, comes, um, we'll take it as a sign that the universe is telling us to back off. Absolutely. You think about going forward with just weight loss as an example, right? So mm -hmm. someone says, I want to lose 30 pounds. And they set all their sight on the goal of 30 pounds. But what they forget too is that what am I becoming to get to that person that that is 30 pounds less in weight, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's why you see so many people, potentially they lose weight, right? They get to you know drop 30 pounds, but what happens? They put the weight back on. And yeah. it's because they haven't mentally prepared themselves for who that person I am going to become when I get there, right? So we forget to, sell, to set the sights and self-awareness. Like the person that shows up 30 pounds less, how does that person show up every day? What are they thinking? You know, how are they creating their life forward? And mm -hmm. when we treat our goals as just this finish point, we forget that life carries on. Yeah. Life carries on in dramatic fashion, and it gives us all the opportunity to, to set sights on more goals. But we put so much emphasis on the goal that we forget the journey is where we have to prepare ourselves for, because that's the yeah. foundation that's going to allow us to not only reach the goal, but also just transcend far past that goal could ever be possible in our minds. Yeah. And and the, the accumulation of small steps, because you remind me of somebody I interviewed a couple of years ago who told me that they were seriously overweight, couch potato, never exercised, whatever. And they just got this crazy idea into their head one day that they were going to run a marathon. And he said he was at the furthest point away from running a marathon. So he got up that day and he walked for five minutes. That's all he did. Mm -hmm. Second day, he walked for five minutes and so on and so forth. A couple of years later, he's running a marathon. But I think that's it. I think we underestimate the small steps. Yeah. I had a, a friend one day and, and he was trying to find his way into running for a marathon. But, you know, I went around the one day and he said, you know, I can just never get past. We were like two miles in and he had like 2.2 miles was a stop sign. And somehow at that stop sign, he always stopped. Right. Every single time, no matter what he had done mm -hmm. to stop. So, you know, we were running that day and he said, you know, I always just I just can't get past the stop sign. And I said, well, let's just run to the mailbox after that. And lo and behold, we ran another 200 feet to the mailbox. And then the next day he went out for a running run three miles. And then it started building from there. He ran five miles, right? Because just in his mind, he had set this point, set this roadblock, set this barricade in his mind that this was the point. This was stopped. This is where I give up. But it, it's not his body telling him that. It was his mind. There wasn't something physically holding him back. It was the mental preparation that had put us in our part. And usually we get comfortable to what has been our surroundings. And so when we set our sights on our goal, we're so comfortable to how we've shown up each and every day that we forget that. That comfort is leading us to the failures we constantly are getting and getting as results because we're not going past our comfort zone. It's easy mm -hmm. to be comfortable, but it's hard to be uncomfortable, right? Because what are people going to think? Like, what would happen? What happens if this or it fails? Mm -hmm. But everything you've gone through, you grow through and you become the next stage of yourself and your evolution by challenging yourself. We're not meant to live a comfortable life. Mm -hmm. That's not how we've ever been great, but everything that we hear, everything we yep. listen to, everything we talk to, everything we watch speaks to comfort. Yeah. Fast food, you know, fast this, fast this, this can come to your door. You don't have to do this. You can do this. You can take this pill. They all speak to, to a life of comfort, but then it, it's not um, surprising that the majority of the wealth or the, more, the majority of people that, that are in fit is the minority. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's such a it, that, that's such a fascinating point because I, I totally agree with you. I call it the the shortcut culture that we live in today, where there's a shortcut for everything. As you said, there's an easy button for everything for people who remember yeah. the easy buttons, uh, and 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 it is and and the comfort thing. Yeah, we're supposed to be happy and comfortable all the time, but that but if we take a look around at how life works, that is not how life works and that is and as you said it's never how life has worked so tell me a little bit as you how did you apply this to your business because i mean you've obviously had a you have a very successful business you've had uh, some great successes how do you how did you apply that particularly in the early days because you didn't just come in and suddenly like have fantastic successes it's always the small intentional actions that set up success mm -hmm. and i've found over the course of doing steps that usually four things will happen if you take no step, 
and there's no action, of course, you will not get any results. So you can't be upset if you take no action and there's no results because that's doing exactly what you've done to date. But if you take action, typically there's three follow-ups. One, you take the first step and it's absolutely in the wrong direction. And then mm -hmm. the lesson there is, okay, don't go in that direction again, right? Try a different direction. At least you have eliminated a step that you've gone to that's gotten something off your books, right? Number two, you take a step and it's maybe kind of in some direction that's helpful. So cool. What do we learn from that? And how can we pivot closer to the roadway that's going to get our, to our goal? Or number three, we take a step and now it gives us momentum to get better questions, to get better answers. And it's on the journey to our goal, right? So that's typically what happens. And when I learned when we started transitioning into buying apartment communities, we buy large apartment complexes in, in seven states. And what I learned in the first part is that I had to get very specific with what I wanted, right? I had to know what kind of building I wanted, right? You could have an apartment community that's that's you know 10, 10 apartments, or you could have one that's 350 apartments. You could have one that was built in 1900. You could have one that was built in 2023, right? You could have one that's uh, condominialized, or you have one that has um you know low-income housing. They're all different models. And you can do anything in life, but you can't do everything. So I had right. to get very niched and focused on what type of community we're buying, and not only what type of community, but how big and where. And so, you know, we started out in Louisville, Kentucky. I was focused just buying on the south side of Louisville, Kentucky, because it's where a lot of the workforce housing was living, right? And so I got very clear on my intentions. And what that does is it sets forward a particular activator in your mind, right? I'm sure, you know, most people here have gone out and leased or brought a car, right? You don't just show up on any car lot and just say, I need a car, right? <laughs> you're, you're looking for, hey, um, I want to get a blue Chevy Tahoe. And so on your way to the dealership, what happens? Every Chevy Tahoe, every blue Chevy Tahoe out there, there's there's a million of them on the road. Well, yeah. did more just magically show up? No, you've uh, conditioned your mind to start recognizing that. And that's what happens with our goals when we set the sights and be very specific. And that's the hardest thing in nature today is be specific with who you want. We can be general, right? But yeah. usually we get general results. But it's hard to set the stage because we're worried about failure, worried about not being able to commit and do what we want. So we don't make ourselves accountable and discipline to our goal. So instead of saying, you know, I want an apartment building, I just, I want to buy real estate. Well, yep. if I say that, no one knows what I want. No one can help me. I can't identify what I want. I can't really determine if it's a good investment because everything looks good, but at the same time, yep. everything looks bad. But when I learned the one part of being patient and persistent, it's allowed me to start setting the runway to accomplish buying these apartment communities because we, we help um, a lot of people in our mastermind coach and to, to buy apartment communities. And the runway is that you could buy one of these in four months or it might be two years, but you're doing this for generational wealth. One yeah. apartment community purchase could set you up for, for many, many years. So if you're doing the work, you can't rush the results because the results are going to come. And mm -hmm. that's anything from, you know, uh, making investments to building wealth to just creating, a, you know, a better relationship with your wife or just, you know, becoming a better parent, right? You can't just be a bad parent one day and all of a sudden be a great parent the next day and then vice versa and vice versa. You have to grow and to be better in how you show up. But it's yeah. also the same thing when you're going after your goals. Like you have to build into the goal. It's not that the Instagram effect where we just see everybody's highlight where the next day, you know, oh, they came out of nowhere. And now today they have an e-commerce business that does a million dollars a month or, yeah. you know, they, they now own an island in Tahiti or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And that's usually where our mind goes is that, oh, it has to be quick. But in fact, what's the rush if you're doing the work and it's, and it's going to come because it's a proven track? When it gets there, it's going to be that much more satisfying, but it's also going to last. Yeah, and It's going to yeah. last past the day. Yeah, and we have yeah we have to get over this overnight success myth that people you know love to cling on to, and especially it's propagated so much be, through social media and stuff. I just remember the band from the '90s, Pulp, when they had their first big hit, and somebody said to them, "Oh, you know, must, what's it like to be an overnight success?" And they they said, "Yeah, and no, that's great. It's great. It's only taken us 15 years." <laughs> yeah, just uh, spot on. <laughs> <laughs> spot on, right? But that, but that's what it is. Everything looks like it came out of nowhere, but they forget all the training, right? And yeah, so, ab it, absolutely. It, the other thing that you uh, you mentioned there, and I think that's it's really key as well, is that sometimes when we set out on a on a path to our goals, we kind of convince ourselves that it's a linear path, like it's just one foot in front of the other, going moving in one direction. But as you said, sometimes the path meanders, sometimes it branches off. But I, I've I've I found in my life that when I 
started to understand that paths don't always lead to destinations. They sometimes just lead to other paths. And sometimes they lead to dead ends and you have to retrace your steps and maybe go back to the fork in the road or whatever. But it, once you get away from this idea of it being a linear path to your goal, I think that's quite liberating. It is because you get stuck on the goal being the end point, right? Like uh, mm. I want to get married to that perfect someone. I want to make a million dollars. I want to lose 30 pounds, as we mentioned earlier. And we treat it as if when you do that one thing, life is over, right? But it's just yeah. literally the mile marker, right? And then, then the mm. new route starts, right? So so what happens then, right? And so if we're building, you know, Live 100 is helping level, level up your fundamentals. So you go out there and break the habits that haven't served you or no longer serve you so you can build momentum to be able to have the success you, you deserve. But what we usually lose track on is maybe we'll break some bad habits and we'll, we'll, we'll start to get the success, but we'll forget to build the momentum that carries us through the success of life, right? And you want to live a fulfilled, successful life, a life mm -hmm. of purpose, where the events are just, they're things, right? They're little chips in your cap, but you have to continue to grow off those events. Like if you just get married and you're like, okay, you know, I put in this work to be a good person and meet this good person. And now you go out there and, and just aren't, a, you know, a great spouse or it just aren't fulfilling their relationships. That's where many times we'll see things like divorce, right? Because we've mm -hmm. shown up for the moment, but we forget that we have to last past the moment. Yeah. And I think that's the, I, I, that's a good analogy. Even marriage is the amount of people who focus on the wedding and then forget that there's the marriage is actually post wedding yeah. <laughs> and that the relationship. Uh, but the other thing you mentioned there is about purpose. And I do think that this is, you can't act purposefully unless you know what your purpose is. And I think that's probably one of the things that people struggle with most because they, you know, they get up, they do their job, grind day to day, whatever. And if you say to them, you know, what's your purpose? They'll be like, well, just to pay the rent or pay the mortgage or feed my family or whatever, which not that those aren't uh, noble purposes, but they're too vague too. They're acts. You know, and it, I, I was reading something recently and they, and they were talking about like, if you scaled your, if you gave a one to 10 rating on your day, right? Are you finding that your day is a bunch of like three, four, five and sixes, right? If every day is like an average day, like there, there's going to be average in some parts, but like we're missing something. And so we get so caught up on the act of paying rent on these other points. And as if we stop this, like, like, you know, the rug's going to be pulled out of us. And we forget to say that I started when I was young with, with some purpose, right? I had goals, I had aspirations and they get conditioned out of us as you know, we continue to be around other people that maybe aren't having success or we see, or we have other failures in our life, or we go to school that's patterning us for a certain part of living. So that's fine if that's what you want, but if you're not happy, what's the worst that can happen with you making a small change in your life? Like what is really <laughs> the worst thing that can happen? And there, there can be ramifications, right? There, there could be short-term pain, but, if you go to make a change, you know, everything's changing. We're sitting here right now and the world is, is yeah. rotating, right? You know, it's moving, right? Whether we want, but we, we, get, we want to stay stuck where we are because we're scared of what could happen, but everything's changing with or without us. So mm -hmm. if you want to stay in a life that's just not fulfilled, that's okay until it's not, but you have to make yeah. that choice. Like uh, John's not coming. I'm not coming to your house to pull you out and say, go make a change. Right. Mm -hmm. But you have to get up and say, okay, these last couple of weeks, these last couple of months, these last couple of years, decades, they just haven't really worked well. So yeah. if that's what you're saying to yourself, what's going to say that tomorrow is going to be different if you're going to do the same thing? Yeah, absolutely. And just one final point, because you just mentioned people there. Uh, how important is it for your, uh, you know, for your 100 mile mindset is to surround yourself with the right people and perhaps remove yourself from the wrong ones? So I'll give a story. I did a, a during COVID, um, I was going to do a hundred mile race up in Canada. I was looking forward to it because it was going to test the elements with cold, right? Well, it got mm -hmm. canceled and they moved it to virtual. So with the virtual race, I welcomed um, some people to do this race with me. And I had, I think it was eight or nine people join me that day um, to come out. And they weren't, none of them joined me for a hundred miles, but they were just going to catch me on the race. So I had a couple start with me right. at 4 a.m., a couple catch me for a part. And what I found that day was just remarkable. I finished the race, fine. I'd done a hundred mile race before. What was truly the story there is I had someone come out that had only run three miles before, ran seven miles. I had another mm -hmm. person join me that had only run five miles. He ran 50 miles. Another person that had run only 10 miles before ran a marathon. And another person that ran a marathon before, they ran 37 miles. 
did they magically just get more fit that day and they were able to accomplish more? No, they, they had other people around them that wanted to be better and to do more than they had in themselves been able to do before. And they saw what was possible with other people. And what happened? Because they saw the energy, the focus, the positivity, the surrounding of other people wanting to excel past what they were comfortable before, everyone started to exceed their bounds of what they could truly do within themselves. So when you surround yourself with other like-minded people that want to do more, what happens? You do more yeah. because it, you're getting brought up, right? You're not getting brought down like crabs in a bucket. You're getting brought up to that next level. And then it's your turn to help level them up by taking it to the next level. Yeah, that's fantastic. What a great ending. That's a great story and, uh, and a great example. So thank you for that. All of Jason's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a bit more about you and what you do. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, you know, Jason Yarusi over with uh, Live 100. You can go to jasonyarusi.com, find everything else about our Live 100 program. Also, we have Live 100 podcast. We talk a lot about self-improvement, all the action steps you could do in just real short tidbits each and every day. Excellent. Well, I would encourage you to go over and check it out. And who knows, maybe you'll join Jason on a 100 mile run one of these days. Let's go. <laughs> I'll be a little bit behind you. I just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, mar I'm a martial artist, and I, oh nice, recently did, uh, uh, I did uh, my graduation to my master to being a master, but wow. it was, a, it was a two, it was just the, the preparation was two months of pretty much six days a week of training, yeah. many, many, many hours, and, but it's all of those things. It's, if it's something's worth it enough to you, it's amazing how you can actually get through things that you don't think you can get through persistence and discipline speaks nothing greater than, than it does to martial arts, yeah, right? Exactly. The years and the time and the energy going. So congratulations. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. All right. Well, listen, thanks again, Jason. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.